so no pull up to the back street. I'm shooting every head from the front to the back seat. Bad environment, turning good. So let the people know who we sitting with right now. What's going on? What's going on? Um, your boy DJ Omatic Beats. Uh, one part of X Factor, one part <laughs> SE. Definitely no malice official DJ. Um, just me. You know what I mean? Yeah, your man ill. Just your humble servant out here trying to make people rock and have a good time. Yes, sir. How did you come up with the name Ill Maddie? Um, actually, it started well. I was when I first started DJing. I started DJing with my cousins, um, DJ Philly, DJ E Biggs, and everybody used to call me Ill because like I started scratch. Like I, I learned DJing backwards. You're supposed to learn mixing and blending for. I learned scratching. So. I used to always scratch and cut up records, so everybody used to be like, yo, you ill, you ill, so I was like, okay, I'm DJ ill, and then it was a record, uh, not a record, a uh, DJ battle at Mars Music that the Buddha Brothers had going on, it was when Serato first was coming out, and I got into the battle, and I was battling an older dude, and it was, his name was Illmatic, and it was like, oh, y'all battling for the name, so <laughs> oh my God. I get up there, and I just start scratching, I remember the record it was, it was... Voice 59, uh, boom, because that record had just came out. <laughs> it was, it, and the, the the beginning of it has this tick 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 tick. Dun, dun. So I kept bringing the tick 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 back, and then I brought in a scratch record that was called uh, Super. It was, uh, was a Super Seal. It has a picture of a dog with a. It's it's a it's a record that just got scratch sound effects and you cut on it. So I cut up with that, and I won. So they were just like. Illmatic, and I was like, well, I don't want to say nobody name, you know what I'm saying, so Illmatic Beats, because I like making beats, and I mm -hmm. like production, and I was like, really into producers, like, heavy at the time, you know what I'm saying, so that's how Illmatic Beats came about, and then, I mean, not to mention I'm a heavy Nas fan, I was like, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, that, 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 it just came together, but it was like, oh, I do bang with Nas a lot, so, and the Illmatic album was one of my favorites, so, that's how I got the name. Yo, so when you won that competition, was that the first DJ competition you won? At that time, yeah. I mean, after that I won more. I won uh, another one where, this is when I stopped doing competitions. I won another one um, at NSU. It was a DJ and rap joint. So they had a rap battle and they had the DJ battle. So I get into the DJ battle, but I could freestyle. So I just jumped in the rap battle just to see, I wanted to prove to myself I could do it. So I won both. Like, I ran through the, it was like I was in the competition and I'm DJing, DJing, I'm confident, I'm like, cool. But then when I got to the rap part, I'm spitting against cats and I'm winning. I get the first one, I'm like, whoo, got the first one. I'm like, I'm probably gonna be gone by the third. Got past the second, I was like, whoo, whoo, wait a minute. Right. Yeah. Let's calm down. By the time I got to the last round, I was like, Okay, I don't know how I got to the last round, but I'm here. And I finished the DJ joint, and then I ended up having to battle in the DJ joint against my cousin. Ooh. I had to end up, it was me, it was me versus my cousin E. Biggs, which was crazy because we always just do friendly competition mm -hmm. of us like iron, sharp, and iron, but then it was like, it was real. So me and him going at it on the set. <laughs> so I win this, the DJ part, and then the rap junk, when they said I won that, I was just like, yo, I won both. I said, I'm not, I'm done. I, I, <laughs> Because I, I proved to myself. It wasn't about proving to others. It was more just proving to myself, yo, can I do this? Can I really just pull an eight mile or something? Yeah. And you it did worked. it. I did. I remember the one I lost, um, Pharrell was at this battle, matter of fact, when I first met Pharrell. It was at a club called Lagoons down at the beach. And the Buddha Brothers had a DJ battle. It was my very, it was my second. It wasn't my first. It was my second DJ battle. And... They had some cats. They had, yo, they had some DJs in there that was doing some amazing stuff. And I was like, whew. So I remember I was I was like 15 maybe, 16. No, nah, I was like 15, because I started DJing at 14. The Buddha Brothers used to let me be around with them. I was too young to be in the club. So I remember I got in there and the ladies asking like, oh, what are you drinking? I'm like, Coke. They're like, with what? I'm like, Ice? Like, <laughs> what else is cool? So it's like all these older cats in there, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to be smooth, but crazy thing, my mother took me to the battle and sat in the club in the back. 
but she was like, yo, you got school the next day. And her rule was, I'll let you do this DJ thing as long as your grades aren't affected. And, you know what I'm saying, you keep your, your school, your church things first and you do that. So I kept everything in line. So she's sitting in there and I get into the battle. It was my turn. They, first time I got to hear my name on the radio and it was calling me DJ Ill. They was like, Ill, they was like, yo, they named all the DJs in the battle. And they was like, yo, DJ Ill and all that. So all my friends was like, yo, I'm at school. They like, yo, I heard you on 103. Your name went there, you going to the battle? Yeah, I'm about to be in it. Can y'all come? Nah, we can't get in. Uh, I'm like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Damn, so I get there, set up, I'm nervous. I played Fat Man Scoop, uh, Be Faithful. Mm. And I ended up doing a mix up there, but I lost horribly. Like, like when I say the other DJs was spinning and doing, st like, uh, 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 I was like, oh, man. Oh, I, I mm, okay. I wasn't prepared for that. So I remember <laughs> I was kind of down, right? And the Buddha Brothers was like, yo, I remember Law, God bless his soul, Law. It's like, nah, kid. He's like, yo, you did good. All the DJs is like, nah, kid, you did good. Like, cause I was the youngest cat in there, so they already was looking like, okay, we got a kid in here, like, and the kid about to be in the battle. It's just like, what's good? It just worked out. It worked. All those cats mentored me and made me better. So I learned from my failure. I didn't take it as a failure. It was a lesson in, in just the path that I was going in. It, it gave me that oomph, like I was like, cool. And I remember I was down a little bit, so I walk outside, my mom's like, okay, I'm gonna get the car, cool. So I'm like, all right. So I walk outside, I'm trying to pretend like I'm older and junk for the girls and stuff. And when I walk out, I no lie, I run right into Pharrell. That is when I hadn't, I mean, Pharrell was known out here, but this is before like the Pharrell that you know now. Mm -hmm. This is Pharrell that was still, he was making hella beats. He had the, um, the NERD album, it just came out. Uh, it was crazy shit he was doing, you know, already. And it was just kind of so when I met him, he walking up with, um, I remember he had, uh, like, at the time I didn't know it was bait, but I remember he had the camo jacket on, hoodie, you know, his hands in his pocket. And I walk up, and he didn't have no, like, entourage with him, just him, but he was still, it was still a big deal, him being at the club. But it won't, like, everybody going crazy, like, now. So walked in, I walked up to him, like, oh, my bad, like, he was like, nah, he was like, he was like, what's up? Like, real cool. I was just like, for real? oh yeah, do all the uh. <laughs> Yeah, what's up? I'm, just, I'm down right now. My head is like, I can't believe I got up there. Yo, your mom trying to give you, like everybody was trying to make me feel better. Me and my mom, like, it's okay, baby, you did your thing. Mama, that's not, don't, please don't do the mama thing. Just, just let me, let me take this, let me eat this. And you know, Kat told me I did all right. Just everybody gave me that encouragement. So I remember that was the first time I met him. That was the second battle I lost. And after that, just I just kept going. You know what I mean? I just kept going. Let's talk about We talked about the career beginnings. How about we go into your beginnings life story? Um, did you start in Virginia or did you start in California? Um, originally Oakland. I was born in Cali, um, Oakland, California. My father was a minister. Uh, God bless his soul. And... We moved here, like, I was always in the music because I was always in the church. So I could play drums, piano, and organ. Um, I know how to write. I know how to, like, my, my father was, like, not only did he preach, but he had, like, a 300-voice choir, a youth choir, and they had albums out, and, you know, like, kind of, it was like Kirk Franklin before Kirk Franklin, pretty much. So he would go to the inner cities and get all the kids at the time, like, and back then it was like, I mean, we talking about in the 80s when like Blood and Crips and all that stuff was going on in Cali, in the Bay Area and all that. My dad was going in those areas because the the gang members would come to church and leave their guns in the back. One would sit on one side and the other sit on the other. Like, mm -hmm. no cap. They just trying to, because all the funerals were being done at my dad's church. My dad would do the funerals for a lot of them, so they, and he would counsel a lot of them. So they'll come to church, be respectful, then leave out their separate ways. So he would go get the youth or the kids that was in the gangs or their little brothers or even, you know, just them themselves. And you have a whole choir of mixed in gang members, mm -hmm. um, like kids that, like you seen the movie Lean On Me? Yeah. It was like that. And my dad had all them together and they traveling the, like traveling the world and doing that. And I'm a baby, like I got born, when I was born, 
my older brother, he um he's a gospel singer, Brent Jones. He got um he got Grammys and stuff. Like he really doing it out there. He live in LA. I remember uh he told me when I was born they was recording an album. So when I was born, Pops was in the studio, they recording an album. My mother gets rushed from the live recording to the hospital and yeah, I was born in the midst of a concert, pretty much. A gospel concert. So it was like they rushed out there and then you know, came to see where I was at. I was there. Boom. But um yeah, Pops, he passed away when we went to we had a, a revival and he was preaching in a pulpit and he finished the sermon. The sermon was about church unity, about mm -hmm. breaking the denominations and really just coming together, um, because we all worship one one God the most high. And after he finished, he had a massive heart attack and and died right then. And I was sleeping in my mom's lap. I was like seven. So like, first death experience I had was I, my pops died. I went to, I woke. When I went to sleep, I had a dad. When I woke up, I didn't have a father no more. He was gone. And mom's was crying. I remember it was crazy. But my mom's is from here. So mom's wanted to move back here. So we moved back here and I kept going back and forth from here to back home. Like every summer I was going back home to Oakland, you know, visiting the family and then I just once I got once it started getting like close to my I guess once I started getting close to that whole DJing vibe, I just said I'm just gonna stay out here. So my beginnings of finding out about you, it may go earlier than this, um, but Hip Hop Monday is on the radio when you oh, would take yeah. over. Oh dang, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, to be honest, all that came about, the radio thing came about in a crazy way. I got on the radio my la my my 11th grade year in, in high school, but I wasn't supposed to be on the radio. What I did was, like I said, we started off, me, Philly, and E. Biggs started suggesting entertainment. So we started a company together, just DJing. So it was us, and then you had Jumpstart Entertainment at the time that was out. That's Jump Off of them. Mm -hmm. So a lot of DJs that you know was part of that, like DJ DC, uh, Showtime, Mano. Uh, mm -hmm. Dang, uh, dang, it was a lot of a lot of cats that's popping now. We all started kind of this DJ thing off together. Just uh, like Showtime had told me, he's like, I was I started off first with it because I was starting off the youngest with it at the time. And then it just kind of all. Everybody start doing their thing because Jump Off was young doing his thing on the radio. Yes, sir. But um, at the time, uh, I got onto the radio because DJ Ruckus said, "Hey, we doing parties and stuff at this time. Like we we doing parties like the Peppermint and all these other joints. We throwing our own own functions and stuff." And I went there and I went to a college party. Ruckus told me, "Yo, go up there and audition for the radio," but he didn't tell me you had to be a student. So I went in there, I did the whole audition process, smashed it, went through all the stuff you're supposed to do and got on the radio. And then they hit me, when they was trying to pay me, they called me on um, when I was in class, I was in science class. They was like, yo, you're not registered as a student here. And I was like, uh, cause I said, they said, where you at? I said, I'm in class. They said, which class? I'm like, um, science? <laughs> so. He was like, he said, yo, I need to see you in the office when you get out of school. Cool. So I went in there and he asked me, yo, why why didn't you just tell us what was up? I'm like, to be honest, I wanted, always want to be on the radio. That's what I told the Buddha brothers when I met them. They said, what do you want to do? I said, I want to do what y'all do. I said, straight like that. They said, all right, you can come with us everywhere. Uh, so I remember I got on the radio because I told after I told the truth, I was about to graduate like... By the time they found out, it was my senior year, and I was about to graduate in like three days. So they was like, okay, well, when you graduate, then you get back on. All right, that's three days. <laughs> yeah, hey, man, bet, I got you. Boom, graduated, got on the radio, and then from there, like, it was a lot that happened before Hip Hop Monday set, because I went, I had to, you know, pay my dues and stuff, mm -hmm. and I got, I got into that swing because my best friend J-Rod, had jump off as a mixer on his show and they had throwback thursday and they could jump off didn't have enough like older records and hip-hop joints so he said yo ill can you come and do thursdays and i do the rest 
I like cool. So I started doing Thursdays, and then Throwback Thursday became a thing. It became like a big thing. You know, just and I'm just playing records that I I used to listen to the Buddha Brothers do and you know B do and, and mm. DJ Puff Dragon and all mm. of them and, and stress and you know what I'm saying all them that that had a hand and Jack and had a hand mm. in me. I I listened to what they did. I vibed off of it, and I just did that in my own way, and it it got big. And then that's when um. What was that? Uh, uh, it was an old school concert they did out here, and that's how I ended up going on my first tour. Cause I went on my first tour with like Salt and Pepper, Dougie Fresh. Um, it was going. I did the East Coast side while it was another DJ that did the West Coast side, and I was traveling doing that, and that was all off of. Um, damn, what the name of that shit? Cannot think of the name of that <laughs> shit. That's crazy. Damn, we get old, kid. <laughs> you getting oh, better. Like, uh, it, it's gonna dawn on me later. Uh, but cause a Jizzle, God bless his soul. You know what I mean, we we was doing that joint together. He was hosting that, and um, it, it all all Hip Hop Monday was just a compilation of all those things leading up to it. So when they gave me the Monday through Friday slot. I wanted to do something different each day, so it wouldn't to break the monotony. Mm -hmm. Cause I could have gone up there and yeah, just kept playing turn up, but and all the hits and stuff. But that's what everybody else was. But it was a lot of hip hop music that was being produced that people didn't get the light of. So Mondays was Hip Hop Monday. I had a driver do a um, freestyle for me for an intro, and I just start playing joints, getting like Ninth Wonder joints and Jay Dilla showing love with that. And, Whatever I could get my hands on that was banging and some classic joints or some new joints and you know, Hip Hop Monday, that was that's how that just came about because I just saw a need for a break, a mental break. And Mondays is chill. So on a Monday what I wanna hear, yeah, yeah, let me hear some Talib. Let me hear, you know, some most. Sure. Let me hear some classic Kanye. Yes, sir. This before Kanye got crazy. <laughs> this was he was still Kanye, but we saw the craziness was coming. It was yes, like, mm, <laughs> my right, all right. We with you, Kanye, but that was a little left. But it's all right. Now we like, all right, well, we, all right, damn it, Kanye. But yeah, that's where Hip Hop Monday really came about with. You man, know what I mean? People like you, DJ B, um, like you said, Puff, everybody you name, y'all introduced me to so many artists. Like you in particular introduced me to Gangstar later oh, in my life. Like, oh, right. yeah. yeah, and like you changed my whole perspective on music, just tuning in. I might hear a record I would never have heard in my life just listening to you spin. Uh, that's that was my goal. My goal of it all was to do that. Like I remember even just um, coming up, we had vinyl, and we didn't have enough money to get the, the records. We had at this point now we all got single mothers. You know what I'm saying? Me puffing. I mean my puff. Me Philly and um, and E. So our mothers, you know what I'm saying, there's family, so you know, they supported our DJ and thing. But we had to get records. And records was it was crazy. Cause the way you could download music now, it wasn't that easy. You had to go get a record and you want to get doubles. So doubles is like if your mom only give you twenty dollars and you got a party that night and it's three of y'all and y'all all got twenty dollars a piece, y'all gotta figure out what records you need. So you gotta make some sacrifices. Y'all gotta mm -hmm. put y'all records together and stuff. So then I got introduced to a dude named T, Two Type. He had this record pool that he supplied all the records for all the radio station, had all the artists coming through. And so I remember when I met him, I got put on to him by the Buddha Brothers, of course. They said, yo, holla at T. I hollered at T to have like a little part-time gig. And he was like, yo, well, you could put the records in the cubbies for all the DJs. Now, all the DJs I'm putting the records in there for is everybody that's on radio. B, Puff, Stress, Rick G's, um, uh, Jack, freaking um, um, Karee, like, and everybody popping. So, and they coming in and out the joint. This is like the mecca where I needed to be, where I wanted to be, where I could soak up, like, whatever knowledge. So I was just like, he's like, yo, you can do that. So do you want money or, I mean, I could pay you in records. Give me records. <laughs> what? I ain't want no money. I said, no. Nah. Because mm -hmm. realistically, the money you're going to give me, I'm about to buy records with. So that little hundred dollars that you're going to give me, that's going to buy me a couple records, I could work for records and get way more. 
and I can get the same stuff that they're playing on the radio and play that in the streets when we're doing all these street parties and stuff. Because every DJ got to start off in the hood or in a neighborhood of some sort. You got to get your neighborhood back in you before you can really get on like that. Same with rapping. Like, you know, you want that, that, that foundation where you got your neighborhood and people that bang with you. Mm -hmm. So I'm playing the same stuff that they got. I'm playing that at the regular, like, team parties at, at this club, Mystique and all these joints. And we... We good, cause that was my me my mental method of it was. I never told myself I couldn't do it. I never told myself I wasn't gonna be something. I never believed that I wouldn't be torn. I was talking about, yo, know, telling my cousins, oh, we gonna be on radio, we gonna be on tour, man, we gonna be doing this. I would tell them that every time we touched the turntables and practiced every day. I just believed it, cause you gotta believe in yourself. Whatever it is that you're trying to do, believe in it to the point where. Can't nobody tell you it's not gonna happen. Yes, because if you don't believe in it, how can you convince anybody else to believe in it? No matter how many ups and downs you have, the ups and downs is getting you better and better and better. If you just give somebody something, they don't appreciate it. But if they work for it and they put their heart, like blood, sweat, and tears in it, it means much, so much more to them. You hold on to that a little bit dear, you know what I mean? So that's literally saying all that. That's how, you know. When it come down, when it came down to doing stuff like by Hip Hop Monday, I had established something. You know, I had an established name at that point. I had done a lot, but it was like I never forgot where I came from. So I wanted to get those records out. You know, those things that other stations couldn't play because what happened was um, it was a point where DJs could play what they want on the radio, and then corporate came in and it changed the grand scheme. It was like a big thing where Cats was trying to fight it, but they would have a list of songs you could play, and they had to be played as a mixer. So that's why when radio started sounding similar, like all the stations playing the same stuff, it's because corporate money done got into it. Mm -hmm. That changed. The creativity was kind of, you couldn't do as much. You had to be a little bit more creative. Uh, and I just had the freedom to to do a little bit more that, that others couldn't do. I just was blessed to be able to do it. So I wanted to keep it alive. I wanted to play what they wanted to play and couldn't. I was going to be that, the voice to go ahead and just play it. And that's, yeah, that's what I did. That's just what I did. Like at the time, new music came out on a, a Tuesday. So Tuesdays would be new music. Uh, Wednesday would be like, you know, the hump day mix. So I'm playing like R&B and female oriented and, you know, stuff to get you right. Thursday, of course, throwback Thursday. So I get in my bag and get, and that, I really appreciate everybody that supported throwback Thursday because that was always fun to me. Every Thursday, I was trying to think of more innovative ways to serve the music to the people. What, where am I going with it this week? What am I going to do this week? And every week it just kept escalating. And then Friday was turn up. You know, it was like, yo, it's Friday. I'm about to hit the club anyway. Like, I would literally DJ. Do that, leave the studio, go straight to the club, and rock out. And it just worked out, you know what I'm saying? Radio was cool. I, I just, it was just a, a opportunity to do something in my life that I kept saying I wanted to do, you know what I mean? So, and my whole goal was to actually, I always dreamed of giving, being somebody like the cats I looked up to. Like, I remember records DJ B played mm -hmm. and the rest of them, like when I sit, to be in the midst of them, and I tell them this all the time, they be like, yo, ill, I mean, chill, you one of us, you little bro, you good. I'm like, yeah, but I get that, but I remember stuff y'all did that you might have forgotten that, or stuff you said on the radio that you might have forgotten that affected me and changed me, and it helped. And I just want to let y'all, I always tell them, I just want to let you know I appreciate it. You quick to say at a funeral, Hey, yo, he was this or she was that. You know, tell these people that why they here. Let them know why they here. So I want to let all them cats know. Hey, y'all put y'all put into me. I appreciate it. And yada yada yada. You know, I had these talks with um Puff and, and I had a talk like this with B like the other day. And stress and all them like I, I mean shoot, it's my brothers. Like X Factor, the whole squad. That being a part of that, it was crazy. Like so I mean. My goal is just to have been able to do that. So it feels good to hear when cats come up to me like, yo, I used to listen to you on the bus. I'd be like, what? Like, <laughs> word, like, that's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. Like, dang. I bet it, it gives me a realization of how long I've been doing it.
because I it don't feel that long. It feel like just yesterday, I was getting those records and doing those little parties and stuff. Like I'll do an event and do concerts and just the next day come. It's another day. It's another day. I got another opportunity to do better than the last. So, when, um, being a father, how did how does that? affect you being a local celebrity does it ever get overbearing does it ever make it harder on you you being a parent because i see that you put that first yeah i mean because like i mean being a dad i mean i say it, it is difficult because like i have my little girl my, i got justice she's my youngest she lives here and then my oldest who was seven um her mother had moved to houston like so it was like being able to be a father to both and how I've been making it work has been a, it, it's a task. It's a task. It's a lot of FaceTiming. It's a lot of, you know, you just being attentive. But it ain't, it's those parts of the hard part. Just being a dad ain't, I mean, I love them to life. Mm -hmm. I couldn't picture my life without them. They, they made me a lot better. They made me so much better. Like, I just left my daughter from doing virtual learning. Which is crazy. That's young. Listen, first grade virtual learning, I, I'm sorry. I do not like getting up at so six in the morning. I don't like doing none of the stuff. Like, I don't. I don't. But I do like seeing my daughter get it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Doing homework with both of them. Like, you know, it, it's, it's dope. Seeing them understand and seeing how they're overcoming this obstacle that I didn't even have to do. I tell my daughters all the time, y'all strong. Y'all stronger than daddy. Y'all focused. Like, come on, y'all is dope. Cause daddy didn't have to do this. Daddy had to go to school and that was it. Y'all have to do this off of virtual and still keep your concentration when you around all your stuff. That wouldn't have been me. Nah, I'm gonna tell you this right now. Let me let them have told me I had to do virtual learning back then. I'd have been on some turn tables. I wouldn't have been learning nothing but all you would have seen in the background with me is ever, ever, yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay, that means I got to move my turntables over here. Uh huh. Yeah. Four, I think the answer is. Now, nah, we're talking about English. Oh, my bad. <laughs> like, yeah. they, um, my, my girls is, uh, that's my homies, man. That's my homies, man. They dope. They dope. They so dope. They so dope. So, being a dad, it just focused me on what I need to do, you know what I mean, like that. The minute my child was born, I remember when Z was born, I said, this has to make sense. My DJing has to make sense. It can't be just, I'm partying and I'm turning up and I'm just thinking of myself and my name and my brand, nah, 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 nah. Now, my daughter's here. Then, my second daughter got here. It was like, oh, snap. This has to all make sense. Me going to the radio, me doing all this has to add up. You know what I mean? I mean, I was dedicated. I was on, I did radio from like 03. And this is the crazy thing a lot of people didn't know. Um, when we was at 91, cats weren't getting paid. Mm. Like, people assume I was getting bread from the radio. I was getting bread from, from DJing all the spots and when people buy commercials, you know what I'm saying, we could sell commercials. Shouts to Kurt. Um, like, I'll be honest with you, I believed in what I wanted to do for so long, for years. They ain't give us no bread. They ain't give us no bread. Like, none. None. Like, I ain't on front to y'all. They ain't didn't even know no gas in. I don't care what anybody may have bragged and said to you or thought, no, we won't get no money. Like, got no damn sure I won't. I was, make, I was making it. I, I was making it, you know what I'm saying? I remember, <laughs> I keep it honest with y'all, I remember um, I was homeless one time because I had left, I remember I left my mother's house and I said I wanted to be on my own. So I'm out here DJing, I'm doing the radio every day and I remember I was, I was out back and I remember I had to like sleep at the studio, you know what I'm saying, do that kind of shit still go out there and do parties and stuff. I remember clubs jipping cats. It, like, those things happened to me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, things is cool now. Don't get don't get it twisted. Like, yeah, all this is cool now, but I want y'all to understand that I, I put a lot into it. 
you know what I'm saying? I took a lot of sacrifices. A lot of times when I was just down and out, everybody would assume, oh, he, he good, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, da da da, he doing this club. I was doing it because I had to. Then my kids got hit, and it was like, yo, I, I ain't got no choice. And it was times I was depressed, I was, the anxiety was kicking in, junk, but my faith in God kept me moving. I just knew that it was gonna be better. I knew that it was a reason that these situations were happening. Even at my own hand of certain things, you have consequences to your decisions. But I knew these things were happening for a reason and I could not give up. I couldn't. So I just had to keep going and figure out what lesson I needed to learn from it. Shoot, I remember walking to the station where I was living in, I was in Norfolk and I was living in Ghent. Like, not the old height, the great part of Ghent, the cool part of Ghent, but it's like, you know, where the hippies at. Mm -hmm. All my neighbors was hippies. That's when I learned how to be cool with hippies. I was like, Oh, all right, all right. So this, this is, y'all really live this hippie life, like, like, no bath, like, all right, oof, y'all cool, but a little musty, just tad bit, brother. You know what I'm saying? But I remember walking from the crib to the the, the monorail joint, take the monorail to the station, get out there, do the show from six to ten, get back on the monorail, or if I had to do a club get a cab or something like that to the club, do the club, get at least close to where the monorail was, get back on the monorail, go back, take that back to where it'll drop me off over there in downtown and walk the rest of the way to the crib and get home like it'd be like three, four, then wake up that same morning, go to work and do the same thing all over again. I did that for like, I think like two, two years, maybe, mm. maybe two, maybe three. I don't even remember how long, it was long. But, you know what I'm saying, I was blessed that God put good people in my life that helped me. So I appreciate everybody that like had that like, you know, show love. But it was it was real. It was real for a little bit. It was real. I know others had it harder, but that's why I got a heart for cast. I see with them signs standing out and all that. I mean it didn't get that worse, but I still understand how it feels when you ain't got no transportation, no no place to really lay your head and you try to figure it all out. Like, Oodles and Noodles was my friend for a long ass time. <laughs> Listen, I can make the hell out of some noodle packs. Y'all think it's a game? I can make some damn gourmet meals of that shit. I told my daughter that the other day, like, baby, look, and she liked noodles, but I'd be like, oh, you ain't gotta eat that. You can eat whatever. <laughs> but look, your daddy can throw down with some, man, shoot, get some chicken, scoop that up right there, get some soy sauce. <laughs> I'm thankful now, I look back, I'm wise from a lot of the things there things that happened to me in my life, you know what I mean? In the midst, I lost a lot of people. Like, my grandfather, he passed away. His last thing was listening to me on the radio. I came from doing the radio. I had to do the morning show on Saturdays at one point. My grandfather used to listen to me every morning. He listened to me that morning. I came to my grandmother's house. I had to go do, I had to DJ this big bike fest event um, at Tidewater Park. So I came there to check on him. She said, go in the room and check on your granddaddy. I went in there, he was dead. So I picked his body up. First, I put my head to his head, and I was like, Pops, what I'm supposed to do? Because this is like my last father figure. So I'm like, dang. I picked his body up, put him in the bed so he has that dignity. I told my grandma to call the ambulance. Like, it's crazy. Like, when you see somebody dead, this is the realest thing. You can tell a person dead because the, the, their eyes, you can tell the soul is not there no more. Not just their body being stiff or being cold. Now, they, their eyes will tell you it's great. And Pop's eyes is great, so my uh, my sister, she got murdered in a drive-by in Kansas City. Uh, let me see, my two of my boys that was like my brothers, one, I was supposed to go to his crib, when my man's Jesse, God bless his soul, I was supposed to go to Jesse's crib, and I fell asleep, and the night I was supposed to go there, we used to walk to the corner store together, and walk back. He walked to the corner store, and somebody murdered him for no reason out Virginia Beach. No lie, no lie. He was walking back because he always got a black and mild. And we used to always walk together. So I woke up that morning because I just had got off the phone with him. I was like, yo, I'm going to be over there in a little bit. You know what I mean? Whoop de whoop. Because I just had gave him his Christmas gift a couple days early because I was like, yo, we was in the comic book. So I said, yo, look, I got you this. Um, so I remember I got a phone call that was like, yo, hey, bro, you you good? I'm like, what you mean? Yeah, I'm good. He's like, you didn't hear what happened with Jesse? I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? I just got off the phone with Jesse like, what, before I went to sleep last night? 
He said, yo, turn on Channel 10, bro. Mm. I turned Channel 10 on. He got murdered, and he was crawling to the neighbor's door, bloody, because somebody shot him a couple times and banged on the door and died on the neighbor's lawn. Then my brother Ace, that was my man's Ace Book. He um he he was sick though, and he passed away. He choked on his own blood on his couch. You know what I'm saying it was crazy, but we had just seen each other and all bonded because our other brother was about to get married. So we all was chilling at Buffalo Wild Wings in downtown Norfolk. It was cooling. And I remember he was just like, man, he's like a proud of y'all. He said, one day ill, you gonna get your wife and all that. And we, things, we all good. I was like, yeah, it was a good moment. Hmm. A couple days later, they hit me with the news. I was like, yo. So I mean, I've dealt with a lot in my life. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that for sympathy, saying that it's made me strong. It's made me strong, but my DJing, it made me go hard, even harder with my DJing because so many people believed in me that's not here. That is, I feel like, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I gotta go hard with this. They was all with me at different parties and different points in my life that we was turning up that was always, Ace always had a good word for me, man. Jesse always had all them, all of them. Man, my grandfather was the one that believed in my DJing. He told me, son, you could do this. He said, if that's what you wanna do, you gonna do it. So just do it. So I'm a product of all that, so I just, you know, um, how you lost a few male role models in your life where well, two major um, male role models in your life to see you give away shoes the way you did to these local boys of uh, single mothers um, That's the inspiration man because you came back and helped others without even having a son Yeah, like I wanted to um, just cuz I remember like I always been in the sneakers on a lighter note I always been in the sneakers always been a sneakerhead before all this became popular people not bragging, but I was on it. If you don't believe me, check my Facebook. Check the resume, people. I had it. I still do. But anyway, um, I always like sneakers. And I remember wanting to have certain sneakers that my big brothers had in the game. Like the other DJs and my cousins. And, you know, because moms was buying my joints for Rack Room Shoes at one point. I admit it. I was Rack Roomed up. Because it was buy, it had BOGOs. Buy one, get one free. Buy this, buy my mom was like, hey, so I'm gonna take you to the rack room. I didn't get my first pair of forces. No lie, I didn't get my first pair of forces until like, shoot, I was a teen. Like, I was DJing myself. I finally bought a pair of Air Forces. I was like, yo, I got tired of not having forces. I was wearing New Balance. Um, but I remember how that was. So one day I was just looking at my closet and you know, just in my spirit, like, I was like, yo, I'm about to just give away, I made the post. I'm about to just, if you wear a size 13, holler at me. Because for one, that size is hard to get. And for two, you know what I'm saying? Single mothers be working hard. You know what I'm saying? My mom's, God bless her, man. She, she's still here and I'm thankful for that. And you know, now I'm taking care of her and you know what I'm saying? It's like, moms, moms held me down. You know what I mean? And I get it, you want to get your kid the newest J's or the flyest joint that your kids say, Mom, can I get this for Christmas? And now you a mother trying to figure out how to get this expensive shoe, and you go to somebody reselling, they tell you $300. Now you a single mother with a job, you ain't about to spend $300 on a pair of ones. You're not. But if I can go ahead and just bless the kid with not just one pair, two or three and some gear that I'm not wearing no more, I was hoping it was, it was you know, start others to do it. But I was like, yo, I'm going to just do it every year or something. I was gonna just do that, like find a way just to give, just to give. Like I like giving, I do. I honestly do. I like helping. I like giving. It don't bother me because I've been blessed, and I feel like if you're blessed, you are you're being blessed to bless others. If God gives you, you have to give. You just have to give that wisdom, that good, whatever the Most High has given you. He's given you abundance of it, not for you to sit on it and be like, Yeah, I'm the man. Look what I got. You ain't got it, cause I got it. No, that's trash. Like, why? Why would you? What's the point of bragging about something, and making somebody else feel low for what? You got blessed, so if you can bless somebody else, it ain't like you ain't got more. I got hella sneakers. So yeah, I'm gonna get more sneakers. Kid, here, have some. You know what I'm saying? You have some. This might brighten your day a little bit. It's nothing like walking into school or walking around with confidence on how you looking. That's a good feeling. 
Yes, sir. So if I can help you with your confidence, man, you working hard, you doing your thing in school, and all you wanted was a fresh pair or whatever, here, take mine. I'm cool. I'll get another pair. You have that. That's yeah. just how I be. That's real. One of the um one of the highlights in my eyes for Virginia hip hop that you was a part of with the No Malice opening up at um doing his show at SOBs in New York. That was a major oh, yeah. moment. Yeah, that um we did I can't remember if we did that before we went to Colorado or after. The malice thing, this is the crazy jump. Malice hit me up um a year prior and said, yo, I want you to go, I want you to come with me to to um Colorado to DJ. And that he was looking for a DJ. Like at the time. But he was because he had a DJ and he was trying to figure out some things. So a year passed, and I honestly, for, I didn't forget, but I thought, okay, he's not serious. He hit me up crazy one day. I'm at the gym. He like, yo, uh, I need all your information because they need to go ahead and get your ticket printed. So from there, the SOB's thing happened because I already was DJing for him then, and little did I know I was becoming this DJ and didn't even know the crap. Like, <laughs> I didn't. I remember that whole experience was crazy. Like, we... We on a plane. I'm talking about. We got the good seats, like first class. I'm, I'm, I'm living right now. Like what? What's going on? What's, what's going on? Hold on. Like we get to the room. We got two big. Both of us got suites, our own joint. You walk in there. They got stuff laying on the bed. I got a full view of the mountains. It was great. <laughs> a lot of you, a lot of you not. A lot of you not. That was cool. And from there, um. The SOB's joint was dope when we all went to went to NY and um, that was cool. That was cool because the fans was there. That shit was crazy. I was like, so it felt. I ain't gonna lie, I felt good to get off of. Um, we get out of like the. It was like a for uh, for us. It was like this like tour kind. Of, it's like this little bus thing that they had us on, like just for for the band and for the DJ, whatever. So I'm on that joint. I'm chilling. And we get off and to see how people just, oh, we got to put y'all through the back and all that stuff. And everybody trying to stop us left and right and trying to interview and do all this. And, you know, now just, you G what it is. You're like, hey, we get out there, we walk it straight there. Don't, <laughs> don't do all this. Just boom, boom. Yes, sir. All right. And that's what we did. That's what we did. It was cool. So that was good. That was good. We, um, it was good to to give that performance and have people really bang with us and show how VA does and you know it was just cool like I will say I got some of the best sleep on the road though man I like traveling on the road because you can sleep good it's as crazy as that sound I like that I like being wake going to sleep waking up like Malice got some <laughs> Malice got some videos and pictures of me sleep <laughs> I pray to God he never shows anybody because he got me good like that we, we was playing jokes like that on each other. They got me a good couple times. Cause I was, it was like, bro was like, yo, hold up. He, he's, he's funny. He's, he's cool as crap. He's yeah. cool, like, you know what I'm saying? Definitely loves the Lord. Definitely very supportive. I appreciate all the opportunities he done given me and just been, been a good brother in my life. You know what I mean? Thanks. So, I got a story with Malice. Um, I was working at Burger King at the time. Word. And he came in there. He was with an older, uh, an older gentleman, and I was like, I had a show that night. I had a rap show. I was rapping at the time, and I was like, man, I need Malice to come to my show. And I went over there. And I, I didn't want to be rude. I was like, excuse me. And he sat there and talked to me for a moment. He said, man, send me the information. Send me the address. If I can, I'll come. And like just him even saying that, even him giving me the confidence to keep going. And I see that same energy in you. So it's like I see why y'all team so strong and why y'all winning, cause y'all deserve it. Yeah, he, he definitely he he's like that. He'll he'll talk to anybody. He give that and he got he got wisdom. Mm -hmm. Like Malice got a lot of wisdom. You know what I'm saying? You just gotta sit and listen, man. He he cool. But again, cool cat. And he an OG with it. Like he a G. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> yes, the man loves the Lord. But if you think you can't catch those hands, <laughs> <laughs> yo, you tripping. Like, don't get it twisted. He, he, yeah, don't, don't, yeah. He an OG that is, is definitely, 
blessed and I, I, I love him to life, man. I do. I can't even front. I had I picked three of my favorite mixes that I remember from you. Okay. And I want to see out of these three, which one would you pick as your favorite? It was a 420 mix. <laughs> it was the Jada Kiss mix. Mm. And then it was the tribute you did, the Prince mix. Yo, everybody. <laughs> Yo, that's yeah. that's crazy because. The tribute mix mixes, I know a lot of people remember those. Um, out those three. Yes, sir. God damn. Um, I'll say the Prince. Mm -hmm. Prince, I had the reason I say Prince, even though shout out to Jada. Uh, Jada showed me hell of love when he came to the studio. Um, that's my man's. That's my man's. Our bangs with Jada are heavy. Um, but the Prince joint I like because I was able to be more creative and it was a lot of Prince records I was able to play that certain ones I got away with. I ain't gonna lie because Prince ain't the most cleanest brother in the world. Yeah, okay. Uh, what is it? Uh, uh, I forgot the right album. It sounds like he's saying, it sounds like he's saying fuck but he's not. He's saying, you know, freak but the sound, the way he's pronouncing it. Sounds like um, he's saying funk, but it sounds like he's saying fuck. Uh, that record, I they they raised their eyebrow when I was playing it, but because it was a Prince tribute, they let me get away with that. And it was another record, but it was just fun to do that because I did a Michael tribute mix, and people really went crazy over that. So I wanted to do the Prince one. They kept replaying that. That was another thing. They kept replaying that on on the radio. Both of those tributes. <laughs> I'll be like, y'all replaying that? It's not even my time slot that y'all replaying this joint on. They playing the joint like, hey, the people want this one, it fits in this, so we just gonna do it like you guesting right now. I'm like, all right, whatever. But yeah, the Prince one was cool. I, I like doing the Prince one. That was amazing. So out of these three albums, I found a couple of your favorite albums. I want to see mm. which one you would keep out of these. I have Wu-Tang Forever. I have Red Man Dots the name. Mm. I have Death Squad El Nino. Yo! And I have Big Pun Capital Punishment. Oh, you, <laughs> that's hard. That's not fair. That is not. Oh, oh, you really have done your research. <laughs> not a lot of people know those are my favorite albums. Um, see, the problem with picking this one is because each of these albums was a different point in my life. That's why I love them. Like, Wu Tang Forever was the first time. That I actually heard cussing, like cussing, cussing on uh, on a record, like on like an album, like you know what I'm saying? Because the Triumph record got me into that because I used to watch Rap City, uh, Rhyme Atomically, Socrates, Philosophies, and High Prophecies. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. that one. Uh, but that was a double diff. Um, the Doc's the name had. Oh, uh, that was my my introduction. Even though it was late, that was my introduction to Red Man in the sense of how I became such a big fan of his. Um, I had a crazy story about that too. Like, about Red Man and I mean it's a lot of celebrities I got crazy. I, I can't even Definitely want to hear that Red Man um, story. <laughs> uh, damn. No, nah, honestly, Red Man's DJ I ended up getting tight with with Dice. Um but I was supposed to meet Red Man at one of the one of the shows that I was doing. And I had to leave there and go DJ at the alley. So right when I left, Redman was late, and I didn't get to meet him. But I, I was, I ended up going to the show that they did at the Norva when it was him and Method, and that was the most amazing shit I've ever seen in my life. That and the Lupe Fiasco concert was the two concerts in my lifetime. I'm so thankful I seen it because the energy they gave made me a better host and DJ. Because they was ah. Red Man is cool as crap. I'm telling you, the way. Okay, if you ever see an interview of Red Man, that's exactly how he acts. No cap, no extra. That's him. Method, yeah, Method the same way. Method, you know what I'm saying? He, he cool. But Method be a hundred. He like Buster. Buster, when I did the show with Buster, Buster, Buster was cool, but it's like it's Buster Rhymes. He, he just says it how he feels. But Red Man, yeah, that, that's a crazy story with him. Red Man was, um, I mean, he was, <laughs> I don't know if I could, well, yeah, people know he, he get high. But, yeah, he was, he, he was high. He was, he was, look, that's the only man I seen that could be high as hell 
I mean high as hell and perform flawlessly. Like, wow, just good, just good hip hop. You'd be like, how, Sway? How? Because I'm just in here off of contact and I can't get this shit together. Like, I'm trying to remember what I'm about to play. You up there, <laughs> doom, doom, doom. So, nah, Red, I, I say back to the album question, my fault. Um, damn, I'm a capital punishment with my shit, too. Yes, sir. I'm gonna go, okay, you know something? Shout out to Keith Murray, my man. I'm gonna go with Def Squad because Def Squad gives me Red Man, Keith Murray, and of course, um, Eric Sermon. And that album, I literally memorized the whole album when it came out. So, Yes, Wu Tang for all my hip hop fans. Yes, I love Wu Tang forever. These are still my top ones, but if I gotta pick one out of it, I'm gonna go with Death Squad El Nino. Y'all only gave me one, one crazy album as far as when it comes to that Death Squad. I, I'm kind of upset about that. I told Keith that personally. I said, Yo, Keith, why is it that I only got Death Squad El Nino, bro? I need, I need more. Y'all, Death Squad, get, get together, do, do something, please. Can I just get another another album? Something? <laughs> one Damn. more. Just give me one more. But yeah, that that was Yeah. I'll go with that. If I have to pick from those, I'll go with that. Perfect. That Tell the people where they can find you at all your social media links. Ah, okay, uh, let's see. It's real simple. Just type in DJ Illmatic Beats and all of them will come up. Twitter, Facebook, um, IG, you know, Snapchat, or for uh and Periscope as well. Oh, and YouTube, YouTube. I got, I do start next Thursday my YouTube show, um, so that's gonna be live. So that's gonna be yeah, it's it's gonna highlight. I want to highlight a lot of. It's a lot of artists out here that I get the privilege of playing their music in the club. That's why on Saturdays at at Broadway, I I play local artist stuff in there in the midst of the hypeness. That's the reason for all those that wonder. But you'll notice I'm playing hype tracks. I'm playing the tracks that the crowd bounce to because I want to give them that shine, you know. Shouts to Fetty, uh, definitely big up to that kid. He, he doing mm -hmm. his thing. Coming He's up. Definitely doing his thing. Um, young Crazy is, of course, you know, Yon, the whole familiar, you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, you can find me on that and that's coming. So get a chance, tune into it, show some love, show love back. I mean. Yes, sir. And one thing I want to say for the fans and everybody out there who grew up in the 757, what we would all like to say for you is thank you for putting the music first, always, and thank you for always being like a legend out here and always like just keeping yourself 100. You ain't ever in no bullshit or you know what I'm saying? You are, you're an inspiration. Man, I appreciate it, yo. Um, if, I, if I can do anything, I hope to inspire, I hope to encourage, and I just hope that whatever it is that y'all out there trying to do, now is the time. Let me tell you that now. Now is the time. You have an opportunity now that you use social media to your advantage. Come out with those businesses. Come out with those those CDs, the mixtapes, them downloads. The, the use the internet to. You have a lot more advantage than I had when I was first starting out. And you can do it younger. You can do it now. Whether you 10, 11, I don't care if you're five. My daughter's six and got a YouTube channel. That's crazy, but I, I love it. You know what I'm saying? Just don't stop believing in yourself, okay? Keep God first. The Most High got you. He has a plan for you. Just don't give up. Don't give up, all right? Don't do that. You got it. I don't care if you don't think you got it. I don't care if anybody's saying, somebody whoever needs to hear this, you got it, all right? Keep your head up. Relax. Get back to it, all right? Take a breather and I go back to it. You got it. That's all I can give you. Yeah, man.